there's a reason why game shooting is expensive. It's labour intensive. There might only be eight guns here today, but there are three times as many people ensuring the day goes according to plan. Andy is often part of the beating line, but today he's out front and so is his cousin Gary. Gary. They've drawn pegs next to each other, which could be entertaining. Crow is here as a thank you for planting the cover crops. Nice day, nice bit of weather. So a bit bright, really no wind, but uh, hopefully they fly well, they usually do up here. Good thing is I've uh, drawn a peg next to plus one, so could be quite fun anyway. Watching him shoot, taking the mickey out of him, him taking the mickey out of me. It's all about having fun really, not all about the shooting. No, I just love being out. On the ground above the guns, Lexi is working uh, her dog. The two pips that I give her mean for her to change direction whatever she's doing. Um, so if I were, if she was going too far out that way, I'm calling her back around to move around this way. If I want her, if I, if I see that there's something over there, I can get her to move and go into the direction I want. The multiple pips I use, good girl, is the recall. Um, so she knows to automatically come back. And the single pip I use is the stop whistle. So if, for example, more on a rough day or a walked up day, um, a bird were to flush quickly or we had a walking gun and they were to fire or shoot, um, I could stop her and maybe either send her in direction of hunting somewhere else or send her for the retrieve, basically. That's what it does. <laughs> in theory, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's that inevitable anticipation amongst the guns waiting for the first birds of the day. Either that or they want to know what Andy is wearing and shooting as it's a bit exclusive. GMK have sent me up a brand new 687 double E double L. Straight out of the box this morning, I haven't shot it yet, so if I have a few misses I can use that as an excuse. Using black gold, dark storm. Uh, these are some quite nice birds here, so I pack a good punch, so I'm using them. Got the Brown Gilet, uh, that's from Jack Pike. By the time this film goes out next week, they will have these in stock. I've got some new socks that they just started, uh, the mauve ones. They've got quite a range of new colours in it, so. You look gorgeous. I look the part, yeah. Considering Andy has never shot the Beretta, he's doing okay. It looks the part on a shoot like this, with the engraved side plates. Another of the guns has a Beretta SO6, very tasty. The next drive coincides with the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. As we're just a few miles from Biggin Hill, it doesn't take much to imagine the sound of a Spitfire flying overhead. Stand there and you just think how many planes and what planes come through here. And back in the war, and just unbelievable. They do usually fly the Spitfire out of here. They do flights out of Big and and it's quite nice when that comes through. You can just imagine one coming out, but you can just imagine like 10, 8, and 10 coming in or going out. The noise must have been just phenomenal. Because it does, it just makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up when you hear it crackling when it goes out. The whole shoot stops for a two minute silence. It ends with a single shot and the drive begins. From the beater's perspective, there are plenty of shots being fired. So what's the trickiest part of this job? Keeping a straight line. 
Um, yeah, and certain bramble pathways that aren't pathways <laughs> um, that you have to kind of maneuver yourself through. It's not that bad, there's nothing really terrible about it. It's not really a hard job, <laughs> one would like to imagine. <laughs> Time for a snack. The guns enjoy a few nibbles and a drop of something while the beaters move to the next drive. Andy is at the end of the lineup for this one, tucked up in a wood. It's black gold like on parakeets. If they come back over, I'll let you know. Um, there is quite a lot of parakeets up here. They've moved out. They've... I can hear him. He's sitting up in one of them boot trees, I think. Um, yeah, they're moving out from Keston Way, Bromley Keston, there's quite a lot up through there. They're just pushing out and pushing out. There's getting quite a lot of them about now. This is Crow's best drive so far, with some lovely shots. Yeah, I, nice peg there. I had some nice, some nice ones. I had one real cracker. Um, yeah, one real cracker. The elusive parakeet never come out. <laughs> Bloody thing. But hey ho. No, I had some real nice ones there. I had Ten on there for twelve shots. I was happy with that. There are some very pretty large birds here again this year. Gary fancies stuffing one for the sitting room. Not sure how well that would go down with the family who are also here picking up, but give it a go. All too soon, it's the last drive. Last drive, been a good day? Yeah, it's been a good day, it's always a good day. Um, yeah, I had some nice birds. Missed a few easy ones I shouldn't have missed, um, but hi ho. But no, I've had a great day. It's good shooting next to plus one as well. Another two misses, no. That's nice shooting next to plus one. Wiped his eye a couple of times. <laughs> hey ho. Very few birds in here, I think. I've already had a gamekeeper on the phone telling me there's a lot of birds in here, so. Every time your missus on the phone telling me you've just missed crow. <sighs> it's a pretty, pretty gun, if, even if it's a new gun. Yeah, it's a lovely gun. Yeah, a nice gun. Um, the only problem is it's a little bit tight. When you have a flush, it's getting it open and shutting it again, but there's nothing wrong with a gun. Just want to be a bit looser, really. I don't like things that are tight, like a bit loose. Andy finishes the day with a right and left. It's a great start to the game season for Crow, who's got a few more invites left to look forward to.